wow, 320 degrees. Good afternoon, everybody. Ian here from RedlineStands.com. Got a little bit different video coming your way today. I recently did a video where I reviewed the Eastwood Company's home powder coating kit. And uh, I did a video where I was trying out powder coating for the very first time, having no idea what I was doing. And I pretty much documented everything in a video. And uh, I had some pretty damn good results that, frankly, I was happy with. The biggest thing that I was happy with was that that was one of my best performing videos to date. Today it's doing like 2,600 views a day, something like that. And so since everybody liked it so much, I wanted to do a little follow-up video on that and, and kind of add to it and show you a test that I've been thinking about doing to try and learn a little bit more powder coating. Uh, so follow along. Let's check it out. So when I did that video and that very first attempt at powder coating, I did not have an oven. What I did have was a light, an infrared light that I got off of eBay, like 200 and something bucks like that. And I proceeded to heat cure my parts using no oven, no nothing. I mean, I literally just hung parts right in front of that infrared light, put some aluminum foil behind them to kind of reflect the light and the heat back onto the part. And while I felt like I cured my parts, um, I don't know that it necessarily did the job that it was supposed to because when I checked them with my little infrared, uh, you know, temperature tool, my thermometer, what I found was my parts were only like 150 degrees or so, something like that after sitting in front of that light for 20, 30 minutes. And that got me to thinking that maybe my parts were not cured after all. So I've had the suspicion that maybe my parts weren't cured. And then today I got this comment on the video and it reads, sorry man, take it from someone who does this for a living, you under cured your parts by a lot. That's why you're getting so much scratching that screwdriver shouldn't have gotten down to the metal at all. You need that part at a minimum temperature of 325 degrees for at least 20 to 25 minutes. Now sure, the solution to this is just to get yourself an oven that's dedicated for the use of powder coating. Uh, but the kicker to that is, is you can only fit whatever size part will fit into your oven. So in the case of this tiny little toaster oven here that I ganked from my mother-in-law, you can't do a very big part. Now, sure, you could go off and get yourself a big three-foot cubic or four-foot cubic oven and do nice big parts, but when you've only got 2,000 square feet of man space like I do, I don't want a great big oven in my shop that I'm only going to use like once or twice a year. Here's where the wannabe Mark Rober in me comes out. I've got three test pieces here. We're going to do a little bit of a scientific test here. Three pieces of eighth inch thick steel plate. I'm going to mark these things with my grinder by putting notches in them. One, two, and three. At that point, I'm going to throw them into the sandblaster, which I run a 50-50 mix of crushed glass and 10x abrasive media. Clean them right down to the bare metal, and then I'm not going to clean them with any solvents. I'm just going to take the air blow gun, blow them off, get the dust off of them, and then we're going to powder coat them, but we're going to cure them three different ways. Part number one, we're going to do the exact same way as I did last time. We're basically just going to hang the part right in front of the infrared light, use the infrared thermometer, leave it there for about a half of an hour, and see what temperature we can get it up to in front of the part, and that's going to be our first test piece. No oven kind of deal at all, just in front of a light. The second piece I'm going to test in this little oven right here after I get all the toaster leavings blown out of this thing, and yes, that's an homage to Married with Children. I'm going to bake my second piece in there 400 degrees for at least 20 minutes. This is a good time to mention, I've read online that you don't want to use your home oven in your kitchen for curing your parts. Apparently the powder is toxic, so uh, after I use that little toaster oven for baking a part, it won't be used for food again. Oh crap, I'm recording. For my third approach, I'm going to try and cheat. So I've mentioned that I don't want to spend the money on a great big oven, but more importantly, I don't want a great big oven in my shop, something that doesn't get used very much. So I thought, well, what if I can kind of make like a folding oven kind of thing, if you will. So I visited the local uh, HVAC supply house here in Pensacola, and I picked up a four foot a four foot by 10 foot sheet of, uh, let's see here, this stuff is one and a half inch thick MH-12358 type 800 fiberglass insulation board. And what I wanna try and do 
is I'm basically going to build a box uh, that will be open on one side. I will hang my part down through that box, through the top of it, using a little bit of welding wire. And then I'm basically going to take that box and have the one open side face both of my heat lamps. And effectively, I'm cording off all of the heat and keeping it, hopefully, in the part. So if everything goes as planned, I should have a, uh, you know, a box here that at the end of the day, all I've got to do is take the tape off, take the individual flat pieces, put it over there on the shelf, and then just pull it off whenever I want to. So that's the idea. We're going to see if it works. If everything goes as planned, I should be able to take my homemade little oven box here and basically just put it right up to my uh, heat lamp right there and bake the part inside. We'll see. Once it's all said and done, at the end of the day, I intend to destroy the finishes on those powder coated pieces uh, using a wire wheel on an angle grinder as well as maybe a few other things and basically try and determine is there any difference in durability between the different curing methods. All right, so next, in order to make my little oven box that you see here, I laid it out on my table. I marked it using a grease pencil, got everything straight using a square. And there, I just cut it with a regular utility knife, pulled out a little bit of extra material so I could get everything to fold. And then from there, I just taped everything up using aluminum metal tape. I will tell you that the tape that I found worked best is Venture Tape, 1581A Cold Weather Venture Tape. All right, so now it's time for powder coating. I'm using Eastwood's dual voltage system. I'm also using their uh, Powder Mirror Red 10290. I do have it set on the highest voltage setting in this shot here, and as you can see, it covered pretty well. All righty, I'm ready to start baking. I kind of goofed a little bit. My part that has, I don't know if you can see it, two notches in it will be the one that we, uh, that we bake here with the light with you know no surrounding insulation or anything. Turning it on at 1011, and let's do it. It's almost time to check the temperature on the first part. I do want to show you that uh, my little scanner here says that I'm about 85 degrees, so obviously this thing is off by, oh, 13 or so, 14 degrees, something like that. Okay, so it's 1026. It's been about 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move my, uh, my infrared light here and switch around to the other side so that we're baking it on both sides. I wonder if we can get a temperature reading here. Oh, wow, 320 degrees. Really surprising, 327, 328. Okay, well, maybe that's more legitimate than I thought. Okay, our first part has been on there for exactly 30 minutes, 15 minutes on each side. Let's go ahead and roll our light away, turn her off. Let's check and see what kind of temperature we got. About 316. Not bad at all. 321. Not bad. All right, for the oven test, I've got her preheated to 400 degrees. And hopefully, without burning myself, I can hold this camera and get this thing in here. We're going to bake her for about 20, 25 minutes at 400. We'll see what we got. Alrighty, it has been 30 minutes actually, 30 minutes on my oven part. Let's pull it out and see how it looks. Looks really good. It does. Let's see if we can get a, a temperature uh, measurement on it. 373, 379 I saw, 375, so it's certainly hotter than the other part. Okay, here's our big test. You can see that the uh, the corners inside of this box are really pretty tight. There's there's not uh, really anywhere for a bunch of heat to escape. This is uh, part number three. It's got three notches into it. We are putting it on at 1043. Alrighty, let's roll her on up there and get her really nice and close without bumping it too much. Looks good. Um, the cool thing about this is I could really make this box quite a lot bigger if I wanted to. So uh, excited to see how this does. One neat feature about this that I didn't really plan on is you can actually take this piece of steel up top and just kind of twist it and change the orientation of the powder there. Or excuse me, of the part inside. And if you can see in there as I can, I don't know, eh, not really. You can't really tell like I can, but it's glossing over really smooth and nice. 
I wanted to know how much of the heat was actually escaping the box right here. So, of course, I came up to it, I put my hand on it, and it, it's really nice and warm. It's kind of like, uh, you know, a really hot bath right there. I mean, that, that might burn you. And check this out. This little thing says it's like 71 degrees. There's no way that is correct. Maybe it's because I'm trying to do this on a reflective surface. I don't know, but I can assure you that's a lot hotter than 71 degrees. Okay, it is 1113. My part has been in this little homemade oven box for a half of an hour. Let's move our light out of the way. And let's see what kind of temperature we've got here. 340, 50, 352 I saw. So it's hotter than the uh, the not using the box, but not by anything dramatic. 340, it's cooling already. I am pretty happy with how the fiberglass held up to the heat. Uh, you can see that uh, right along here is pretty much the worst spot that there is. And really it's, uh, it's not even that bad. For the sake of being absolutely sure which piece is which, uh, there's two notches on this one, so that's part number two that we hung in front of the light. Over here, the one that we hung in our little homemade oven. You can kind of see them right uh, there. Three notches on that one, and then the one we put into our little oven. You can see one tiny notch right there. Part number one went in the oven. Okay, so the three pieces are done. They really do look uh, about the same thing, but if you start to look in the glare, and I'll see, can you see the glare right there? See how smooth it is in that one on the middle? Have a look at the glare over here. It's kind of a speckled look over here. Over here again, it's a speckled look. So the middle part has the better finish to it. Now, I don't know if that's because I got more powder on that piece than the others. I mean, it's quite possible it wasn't exactly painted by a robot, uh, but all three of them came out looking good. Let's test them for durability. All right, for the million dollar question, is one of these pieces more durable than the other? I'm gonna hit it with the wire wheel, stainless uh, wire wheel on an angle grinder. I will give you a little safety tip here. Um, I've used that thing a lot on Project Redline, my 67 Nova build, and I have learned that you've got to wear not only eye protection, but double eye protection when you're using one of these things those little pieces of that wheel will come flying off of there like a little missile and they will literally go into your skin like a little needle and be hanging on to you. So I don't have any doubt what would happen if it were to hit your eye. It would be just awful. So uh, double up on the safety protection for these things. For this test, I'm just going to take my wire wheel here and just kind of lightly go back and forth. I'm going to let the weight of the machine do the pushing down. I'm not going to be pushing it down with my hand at all so that hopefully I get a uniform, uh, you know, scrape across everything. Let's see what we got. All right, so I've got my pieces here. This is one, this is three, this is two. I know they're not in order. The number two piece, it is definitely going through my powder coating quicker on number two. Uh, next up, I'm going to say here is uh, number one. We can see a little bit of bare metal there and there. You kind of have to overlook the areas on the very end here because that's where the, the grinder is coming to a stop. So you're really just kind of looking at the middle sections right here. This is definitely the worst. Uh, this is uh, eh, it's not much better than this. And then this one right here has done uh, quite well. And again, I think maybe I had a little more powder because this one is such a smooth finish right here. I could be wrong, but that's what I got. All right, I've flipped my pieces over. Now I'm going to try something a little bit more aggressive. This is a cutoff wheel. So I really can't see any speakable difference between these two, but the one on the end, I can see a difference. Uh, there's definitely more metallic uh, showing through on this piece on the end. I don't know if you can see it, but I can. Up close, you can kind of see that the piece over here on the far left uh, has more metallic showing through my scrapes from the cutoff wheel than the other two. 
Okay, in conclusion, if we're being honest here, there's not a gigantic difference between the parts, really. Um, this part right here, I can see that it's got two notches in it, so that means that was the one that was hanging in front of the light. We didn't use any kind of uh, insulation or anything to court the heat in. It did uh, pretty well against the grinder. It did so-so on the, uh, the wire wheel. I mean, it didn't do as good as these two on the wire wheel, but even then, I mean, you're talking about a lot of passes made over it to be able to, to screw the, uh, the coating up that much. So, you know, it did all right. Uh, let's see here. This one here has three notches in it. That means that it went over there in our homemade oven. Uh, did really, really well against the wire wheel. Uh, did pretty good against the grinding wheel. And then our last piece here with one notch in it, that means it came out of the actual toaster oven. It did uh, quite well against the, uh, uh, the, the wire wheel. Didn't do so hot really in the uh, against the the cutoff wheel, but even then, I mean, it's, it's not bad. All in all, you know, I, I don't uh, I don't know that there's a huge difference between them really. Um, if I had to pick my favorite here in terms of the, you know, how it did, I would have to go with number three there, which came out of our uh, our homemade oven there. So. Um, that's probably our best one. I also like that the uh, the finish on it was a bit smoother. You can kind of see right there, real nice smooth finish. But again, maybe I put extra powder on it. It's tough to say. Out of curiosity, I wanted to see if I could get a much larger part hot enough to be able to powder coat. Uh, I took the aluminum transmission cross member out of that Camaro over there, and let's see what kind of heat we've got here. 239, 256 I saw. Okay, so a big part just in front of a uh, an infrared light. Will it get it hot enough? It's probably going to get it hot enough to be able to melt the powder, but I don't know that it's really going to fully cure it. I hope everybody that watches these videos is learning a little bit as you watch me do this stuff and put it on camera. If you enjoy this stuff, I would ask that you please click the thumbs up down below, like this video, share this video. If you want to see more of the shenanigans I do here in uh, the shop, please click the subscribe down below and follow this channel. I appreciate all the subscribers that I get. I want tons of subscribers. It is a huge pain in the A to make all of these videos and post them all the time. So it always kind of makes me feel better when everybody else finds them helpful and enjoys them. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Y'all take care. Have a good one.